In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to use forms inside of your Zoho CRM system so you can start collecting data from your, either your websites or your landing page and drive that data directly into the system without having to do any manual data entry. I'll also be explaining how to use the A-B testing features as well to improve the conversion rate of your forms. Welcome CRM crew, my name is Nick. Just before we get into the video, if you are signing up to Zoho CRM for the first time, it would be greatly appreciated if you could use my link below. It really does help the channel out. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So you've logged into your Zoho CRM system. We now need to go to the cog in the top right hand corner here. So we'll go to the cog and then we wanna to go to developer space and then to web forms down the bottom. Now this is really, really easy creating our forms and we can also manage the analytics from here and we can do A-B testing as well to increase our form submissions. So if you come to this page, all we need to do now is just press the new form button. We now need to give our form a name. So obviously call it, uh, give it a name applicable to whatever you're using the form for. I'm just gonna call this example form as is. And then we've got the modules we can select from. And as it stands, we've got leads, contacts, and cases. If you've got any custom modules, you should be able to select those as well. Um, and essentially, I will walk you through each of the options. Obviously, if you're using the, um, the form to collect inquiries about your product or service, you really want to be directing the information that you collect from that particular form into your leads area. Contacts, that could be something entirely different. I can't think of a use case off the top of my head. And then cases, we could use cases and forms so we can have a cases form so anyone that's got a problem or question with our product they could create a um, or they could submit a case using a form that we created and a shareable link so we've got those three options here and these are very very useful i'm going to go ahead and use our leads just in the example today and then you just need to go ahead and press the create button so you'll see here, this is our basic form. And as these two fields are business required, they have to stay on our form. And then on the left-hand side, we have got additional fields. And you should, you should be familiar with all these fields. These are all of the fields on your lead module. And you can really, really easily just drag them and drop them onto your form. So as an example today, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna drag and drop the lead source and I'm gonna drag and drop the email, okay? And it's really easy, you can reposition them, drag them however you like, position them as you so wish. So once you're happy with the fields that's on the form, we've also got advanced fields down the bottom here where we can get file uploads, standard capture, recapture, and privacy policy as well. So these two to prevent any spam, the privacy policy for GDPR or anything else, and then file upload in case you're trying to collect information that could be definitely applicable if you are using this form for cases. Okay, so now we have got our fields on our form and let's say you're happy. You can see here on the right hand side, we've got a few options. Now, as I said, these are business required or they have to be filled in. You can tell that by the red asterisks on the top there. This means we can't delete them, but we can change some settings. We can change the label, which is essentially the name. So you might change company to business name. Um, and then you could also add a hint message as well. So maybe a help icon will show, and then you could add a hint to what this is. This obviously is quite, quite a simple field, but maybe you were using something slightly more complex that you need to assist your um, the person filling in the form with. And you can also add a link, so you might have a help link as well, if, if that is the case, if you need be. So we've got those options there. That's the same for that and the last name, of course, as well. We can do the same thing. We can change the label. Now for email, if you press the cog, we this isn't business required, but we can make it required if we'd like to. And I'd recommend that, obviously, if they are filling out a form, you want to collect certain information. So an email is going to be necessary. And then again, you can add a hint message. So if I press the save button there, and then finally, I'm gonna demonstrate something else, and that is using the hidden field. So we would want to utilize a hidden field for our lead source, because we wouldn't want them to fill that information out, but we would want to track that information anyway. And the way you can do this is if you select mark as hidden field, we can then assign a default value and they will never ever be able to see that hidden field. So anytime someone submits a form, it will be added to our leads area. The lead source will be set as the default value and they'd be none the wiser. 
So if we go and scroll through and maybe web research is the most applicable one for this example, press the save button, you can see it's now been marked as hidden. Okay, so they'll only be able to see those three top three fields, but it also means we can track where our leads are coming from. Now at the up the top here, we have got a few customization options. We've got font, uh, font size, font color, background color, uh, label align, and we can change the form width as well. I'll show you the background color changes. Hopefully that gives you a good example there. Press the cancel button. Um, and then we've got the submit and reset. Now we can't get rid of reset, unfortunately, but we can change their names. Um, it's a shame because I would probably remove the reset button myself, but it is what it is, okay? So once you are happy with your form, what you need to do is press the next button in the top right hand corner here. And we need to select the form location URL. So where is this form going? So in this instance, I'm just gonna put www.crmcrew.co.uk and then press the add button. And then you need to fill out the landing page URL. So once they've um, finished or completed your form, you can then redirect them to somewhere else. Again, I'm just gonna put www.crmcrew.co.uk. There we go. So that is now completed. The assign owner is the default owner as yourself. I'm not too sure. Um, you may be able to change this if you've got multiple users in the system. I've only got myself. I cannot tell you, unfortunately. And then we can also add tags. So anytime a lead is submitted, we can use tags. Um, and this again is just another way of tracking uh, for whatever reason, the leads or cases or contacts that have come through and associating them with a lead. Uh, sorry, associating them with a tag. So maybe I'll add the example tag. So anytime someone submits a form, that tag will be added to that particular record. Now we also have double opt-in and we can turn this on or off and this essentially sends a unique URL to the email address that they submit on the form just to, and then they have to follow that link to confirm that they are happy with that information being submitted. Now you're not going to want to use this for um, anything to do with inquiries because <laughs> you wouldn't want to question, question their decision but there are, might be use cases where you do use this. So I'll leave that turned off. And then we can notify leads owners. So just to let them know that a new lead has been created or been added to the system. And you can use a system generated email or from a mail template. We can acknowledge the visitor as well. And this gives us the option to send an auto response email or just choose a default response for all uh, visitors. So this is essentially just emailing them saying, oh, um, welcome CRM crew, or we will be in touch shortly, something along those lines, okay? So that is another option. And then we've got visitor tracking. Now this is if you are using Zoho Sales IQ, I'm not gonna go into that in this video. And then finally, we have got request approval. So this is internal, and we would have to approve the lead for it to go from the um, pending approval area actually into our leads area. Now, it depends what you're using this form for, but I probably wouldn't recommend using this, to be honest. The point of the leads area is to kind of hold um, less lower quality data and then for it to be added to the system when proven that it is of a high enough value. So unless you are really collecting loads and loads and loads of data and you're even then you need to decide whether it's good or bad, then I would leave this as off. So once you're happy, press the save button and we've now completed the setup of our form. And now we can go ahead and embed it. We've got three options here. We can embed it using the source code. We can embed it just using the embed or we can use the iframe. Now these are all very similar code apart from the source. So I'd probably recommend using the iframe or embed unless you'd like to change some of the design of the form and using the source code is gonna give you a lot more options, okay? But if you wanna do any A-B testing, you need to use either embed or iframe. So once you've done that, just copy the code and then using your Wix or WordPress or whatever, just create the iframe and then copy and paste the code into the iframe and then you'll have your form live. So once you've done that, press the done button. We've now created our first form and we will be able to see any analytics, if I press the view demo button, because obviously we haven't got any analytics yet, you'll be able to see them all for the entire leads area. So you might have lots of different forms for leads. At the top, you could change it to contacts, and I like the way it's been separated for these three, very, very useful. 
and you can see the analytics. So if I press the view demo button, we'll get visits, starters, submissions, and then this is what it would look like. Contact us, lead, registration. Hopefully this is giving you a good idea of the information. Now we can clearly see that this is the form that we've created and we can turn it on and off if we'd like to. And we can also press on that particular form, go to the view analytics and see the analytics for the specific form itself. See the submissions, partial versus complete submissions. And we can see all the information that's been added. Zoho is collecting, see regions and things like that as well. So regions, leads created, you'll be able to track a lot of information here, which is obviously very useful because it brings us on to our next point, which is using the AB testing. Now, I was surprised to hear that different types of forms or the way a form is written can seriously increase or decrease your submission rate. So you can create AB testing at the top here, just press create A slash B testing, and then you select which form it is you're testing, or just use the three dotted button and use the create AB testing option there. Give it a name, so you might call example form B, uh, just as an example, press the create button, and then you can go ahead and edit everything. So you can start making some changes, go through the same process, press the next button. You've not made any changes. Okay, I know that, yes, proceed. And then we can use these settings here. So we can say set percent of visitors to be included in the AB test experiment, so 100%. And then we can choose between what percentage, see the variant and the original form. I suggest just going down the middle for the AB testing. So then you can select the date range. So we've got after and the number of days, weeks or months, or you could select a specific date range, or you could select after a certain number of visitors, which is also very, very useful. And then you can select whether to be notified about the AB test winner through email or not. And then you can automatically launch the winner once the test is completed. So this is actually a really, really clever feature from Zoho CRM. Um, and as the form submissions are absolutely vital, especially if it's for leads and generating new business, you're gonna wanna know what is working and what is not. So if I put after five days and then just press start AB testing, we now have a test running. And you can see here it's running. We can pause it if we'd like to. The condition is for five days and we'll be able to view the results as well. So we can see all the information, unique submissions, conversion rate, uh, improvement baseline, undefined percentage of visitors, and you'll be able to track all of the information again. Now, if we head back to the main area and just go to web forms, you'll be able to see uh, the general analytics information as well. Hopefully this video has been useful and I will see you in a moment's time. Hopefully you are now all set to start using forms inside of your Zoho CRM system. If you have found this video at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any further questions at all, you're more than welcome to drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.